Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, we will explore some of the powerful capabilities of the V-Ray frame buffer. In the previous episode, I showed you how you can add a volumetric environment to heighten the realism of your scene. In this tutorial, we will focus on the main functionalities of the VFB, after which we will explore some basic color correction options to finish our image. Let's open the VFB and briefly go over the most important tools. The first thing we are going to do is open the file menu and load an image. You can expand your VFB from here to get the layer tree for post-processing work, as well as the statistic and log windows used for issue detection during rendering. We can also expand the left side of the VFB. This is the history panel. You can turn it on by going in the VFB settings and then adding a path for your history folder. The VFB history allows you to store your entire progress and you can easily check between the images to see if you're going in the right direction. You can preview different images by double clicking on them. Saving an image to the history folder is done from this button. If you want to compare images, you can use the AB comparison tool. Simply by assigning the A and B value to your images, you can shuffle between them. By pressing the W or E key, you can change the type of lines with which you compare images. All VFB shortcuts can be found in the settings menu under shortcuts. Let's start the interactive rendering mode. While rendering, you can use the Render Region tool on a specific area of your image. Now V-Ray will render only inside of your render region. This can be useful if you want to render just a portion of your image. Next up is the following mouse option. By selecting it, V-Ray will track your mouse and wherever you point on the image, that portion will be rendered. Now let's do some color correcting and finalize our image. If you want to add color correction layers, we can do so from here. First up is the Filmic Tone Mapper. Tone mapping is the process of rescaling the high dynamic range values in an image within the visible interval. You have the option to choose between different tone map types. As you can see, each one has a different impact on our end result, so it's best to test them out yourself and pick the one that suits your needs. For this tutorial, I will use the Dawson type. I will adjust the shadows and highlights so that we don't have very bright or very dark spots in the image. Now let's add some exposure to our scene as it's a bit too dark for a midday exterior. If there are some highlights like in the sky that are still too bright, you can use the highlight burn to minimize them. Let's add a curve color correction. You can change individual color channels or the master control. The curve will let you adjust the image based on the tonality, which is the zone of lightness or darkness. The bottom of the graph represents the shadows, the top represents the highlights. Then we have the hue saturation correction. Here I will add just a bit of saturation so the color of our grass and sky become more vibrant and lively. You can click on the eye icon here to disable or enable the effect of your color correction. White balance is a color correction tool that is used to balance out the colors of your image. By fiddling with the slider, you can see that the image goes from cooler tones to warmer ones. Our goal is to find the right balance. Finally, we have the color balance. Here we have the option to tweak the shadows, mid, or highlight tones. There is no right or wrong way to work with these color correction properties, so feel free to experiment and adjust the image to your liking. When we're done color correcting, don't forget to save the image in the VFB. There are different ways we can do that. We can save it to the current channel, which means that all of the changes we have done in the VFP will be applied to our final image, and we will be able to save our render as a PNG, JPEG, or another image type. The other option allows us to save the image into separate files, which will save an alpha, glare, and a final image. And the last option is to save all image channels to a single file. This allows us to export an EXR or VRIMG file of our image. The VRIMG file contains all of the color corrections we have previously applied, so you can share this file with other users for further corrections. In this tutorial, we explore different VFB tools that will help you speed up your production workflow in V-Ray for SketchUp. Then we added the final touches to our image by adjusting the different color correction properties. Join me in the next episode in which we'll create a night version of this exterior scene. I hope you found some useful information about the VFB and you will use it to achieve great results in your next project. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience.